hey man, inside the waistband carrying sucks. <laughs> Got your attention? Yeah, I thought I might. I know most of you guys carry IWB almost exclusively. I know that for a fact because I've met many of you through the years here in the Nut and Fancy Project, done gear checks, and almost always it's IWB carry. On the table is a smattering, a sliver of the carry systems in the Nut and Fancy clan. I'm not making that up. I'm not exaggerating. We have all types of systems. And this actually predates the Nut and Fancy project. It was this way before I cranked off the project. It didn't just, you know, just didn't blossom one day and I go, hey man, I got to learn about all this stuff. No, it's the foundation of all the philosophy I talk about. Dating decades back to the 80s. That's what this video is about. Now, I started off with a controversial statement that inside the waistband carry system for pistols sucks. I will make my case. I'm going to stick to that, but it's more tongue-in-cheek. There are some very, very good things about it, and that's why you see what you see on the table. Okay, you're seeing our own inside the waistband carry systems for a variety of combat handguns. Uh, we have a great representation on there, and i got to say, the display looks pretty sick. It does. I've never laid it out like this. Uh, I do carry inside the waistband sometimes. It's rare. And I'm going to talk about why it is rare for me. And that's what this video is about. Uh, apparently, you want to know because you're here watching the video. If you didn't care about what I thought, you wouldn't be watching the video. So I'm going to make, give you 10 reasons why I think IWB uh, kind of blows. And they're, they're not made up. They're not exaggerated. And it's, again, going back decades, not just the last 10 years I've been doing TMP. Okay, first and foremost, watch the video from first uh, from the first part all the way to the last part. I can't believe how many guys comment and they really make fools of themselves in the comments because it was addressed in the video. Or their logic is so flawed, it's just embarrassing. Okay, let's talk about the good stuff first. And there are some very, very good things about inside the waistband carry. And that's why we still employ it. Again, this isn't made up. We carry inside the waistband with all the systems you see on and off, I wouldn't say like regularly, they're in a rotation, okay? It happens. Usually, these days, I'm running the Galco Classic Light in some form pistol. This is a PF9. These days, I'm usually running a 43. Okay, well, I'll, I'll jump back and forth to the shoulder carry, maybe another carry system, but we're gonna focus on IWB and the good things. Number one, with some body styles, inside the waistband carry is the best way to go. Totally, totally is that way. For instance, I'm 6'3". My son got his shortness from his mother, and he's a midget. Cool. And whatever. He says he cannot carry a shoulder holster and without it printing under his shirt, and even something super slim and compact like this one. And so he opts for inside the waistband carry because it conceals better for his body style. So IWB, for some body types, uh, might be the only way to conceal a, a real handgun. I'm talking something of a major caliber. I do have some backup pieces on here, like the 950 Jetfire. I've got a P32 right here, just as a representation. Uh, I get that. Also, it is faster. Inside the waistband, access and reholstering is superior to most other systems. So you can get the gun out much quicker, and then when you need to get it back in there, that also comes much quicker. Throughout the video, I'll show you some whatever shooting I've done through the years. I'll see if I can scrub up some imagery. If not, you'll just be looking at this cool display on the table. It is nice for that. It, if you know that there is a propensity for conflict, that the gun will be used. I'll use an example of WROL. Um, in most situations, if I'm still, still in the concealing business, in other words, a shirt's going over, I don't want people to know I'm armed, I would go for IWB. I guess IWBC inside the waistband carry. It would make sense then. The gun's going to come out quicker. If you get the right holster, it retains so well. It's not a problem running, doing activities, um, all good. But a lot of guys forget that we are in rule of law now. So the, the likelihood of you actually needing your gun is very, 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 very remote as a civilian. If you're a law enforcement type, uh, those odds don't apply to you. It's much higher and so... Off duty, if I'm a police officer, uh, I would opt for inside the waistband carry because that's my job. 
that I may have to employ force much more quickly. There's a higher likelihood, just like I've said. Doesn't mean I can't get it out of a shoulder holster relatively quick, but I'm gonna lose a second or two in my experience. Uh, you can practice and actually kind of make them about similar if you, if you practice. Uh, that's one of the benefits. Uh, there are some great holsters for it. I mean, any major gun will have a wide selection of, inst we're talking good things, IWBC, and you can get just what you want. Smooth, comfortable, good retention, decent price. Maybe more so than if you would opt for a shoulder holster selection. For instance, if I'm running a Miami Classic with a uh, Glock 19, which is right here, which I have, I don't have it on the table, I have a Miami Classic rig. I love that rig. It's comfortable, looks good, it's high quality leather by Galco. Uh, it's not super concealable. Not with a 1.18 inch width slide. So IW, it has some upsides, and for me, that's why it's still in the rotation. But here we go. Now with the downsides and why I think ultimately for me, and that's what this video is about, for why, well, in the gear checks, you how many times have you, I, I've been on gear check myself on video and you saw me with IWBC? Right, zero, goose egg, ne never. It's always shoulder holster. That's fine. I'll just uh, the only exception to that is like if I did a get together, I think maybe once or twice I had an inside the waistband with a Glock 20. Uh, just then, I mean, but, a genuine gear check, which you know, I don't know if I'm meeting you, vice versa, no. It's always going to be a shoulder holster, usually. usually. Um, number one reason I hate it, it takes more time to dress. Oh, nothing fancy. Wah. No, I'm serious. With this, I sweep it on, I'm out the door. Done. With the inside the waistband rig, there is a certain placement that has to take place. Am I the same point forward? Am I the same point aft? Is my belt threaded correctly? Are my pants sized correctly? That's kind of its own different uh, part. But i got to put the gun in. I've got to thread the belt. I have to pick a specific belt for it. And then I need an offside magazine carrier to integrate as well. Uh, to me, it just takes more time. Uh, actually, a lot more time. Uh, now, if you're different, you go, hey, man, I have no problem. I clipped on, on the gun. Uh, I think it's probably because you've never tried this. I mean, it sweeps on so quick. You just sling it over, boom, put on the shirt, done. Come home, same way. There's no belt, no unfastening, no pants dropping to the floor that you have to worry about. It's, it's Yeah, it's just the way it is. Uh, you know, I swing on this a shoulder holster just like I did a survival vest when I was flying in the Air Force. Survival vest, you just swing it over, loop it over through both armholes, boom. You're ready to go. It's one-stop shopping. I love that. And it has an integrated magazine carrier. So I don't even have to like put on a separate carrier. So now it's a two-piece situation. I'm putting on the holster, then I put on the carrier. Boom. Rest my case. It is. It takes more time. Number two, for me, usually it is more uncomfortable. Not debatable for me. I'm talking about what I like, what I don't like. It is always on my mind when I have IWBC. Even with a Glock 43, I can feel the gun. It's comfortable in the sense that it's not like causing me pain, but I'm thinking about it. You know, it's just, oh, the gun's there, and I gotta make sure, you know, well, we'll get to that other thing here in a second. Uh, it's pressing into my kidneys when I sit in the car. It's pressing into my side, especially if you have bolstered seats in your vehicle. It's always just jamming into your side. You're thinking about it all the time. It's uncomfortable. And by the way, that is the number one reason why guys leave i'm talking concealed carry permit holders people dedicated to self-defense active shooter defense all that good stuff that's the number one reason they leave unarmed because they've chosen something that they may not admit it to themselves or to their friends or online but it's uncomfortable and they go you know what eh, i'm not going to bother with it choose something comfortable and this is another thing to this video and edc and being armed across the board here in tmp that you can stick with that you can live with and for me it's what i've been showing you number three reason i hate iwbc uh, you have to size your clothing you guys know that so now i've got to buy bigger pants and then i got to decide well if i'm just carrying the gun what gun is it because if i carry a glock 43 versus a glock 19 that's a lot of thickness difference right that's a that's a different you know an inch bigger pants you know, then I've got to decide, am I carrying a magazine, offside mag carrier? Am I going to carry two? So here's a Fox Glock 19, Glock 17 mag carrier. Doodle runs this once in a while. 
I mean, that's not exactly thin. That's a fair amount of weight too. So if I'm running this, let's say I had like a composite leather holster for this. This is actually a good one right here. I like it. It's a Blade Tech. It's this one right here. It works fine. Synthetic, you know, is it best in the world? No, it works. It's affordable, sweat proof. I ran it. It works. In fact, the Hitman shoot, I shot out of a Blade Tech. But if I'm running the Glock 19 plus two mags, I mean, three inch bigger set of pants. And then if I go, here's the downside. Then I go, well, I don't want to carry a Glock 19 today. I want to carry a Glock 43 or a Jetfire inside the waistband. But now I have these pants sized for that. So if I go to here, then it's like, oh, freak. Now it doesn't fit. Now it's loose. You get the picture. And then I've got to worry about my belts. What belt do I run? I don't want to wear a big gunfighting belt around daily. I know. And it's uncomfortable. It jabs into your size, uh, into your side. I don't want it. You know, I'll run a, a tactical nylon belt of some sort, but it's got to be big enough to hold the rig. How much weight is it? Glock 19 might need a bigger, you know, belt than, I don't know, 43. It could. This, by the way, is... Tactical Doodle Sick, by the way, hot Ruger SP-101, Cerakoted in that bronze coloration. Go watch that, uh, what was it called? Revolver Pornography or something. <laughs> it's there somewhere. A lot of these guns are hot, dude, because they're in rotation. I'm not going through all the hassle of unloading them. I treat the gun the same way either way, whether it's unloaded or unloaded. It's always loaded, right? You get it. Need bigger pants. I need a better belt. I need special shirts. I need a shirt long enough to, uh, you know, flow over it. Hey, I tuck my pants in. Well, you know, then where's your speed? If you tuck your, your pants in, then you got to, you know, this, do the yank, the shirt yank out. Then you've got to worry about a specific holster system that will allow you to tuck your pant, uh, your shirt in. Uh, I don't know. A, lo a lot of the business attire, it doesn't work with inside the waistband carry uh, unless you're willing to wear a suit coat over it. So you tuck your shirt in, the gun's showing, and then you wear a jacket or a sport coat or a rain slicker over it or whatever. But now you're committed to keeping that on. I've done that before. And when I lived in Washington State, I did IWBC all the time. That's where a lot of this comes from. And I was like, dude, I just, it's such a hassle. You know, it's just, remember, we're in rule of law. We're not going to war here. It's, the propensity is very, very, very rare. A lot of the clothing you ch choose should have a heavy denier fabric. Because if I'm doing inside the waistband carry on this uh, Walther PPS, this is a really cool holster, by the way. This is a Galco, I think this is Galco. Yeah, simple suede holster. It's marked 228 because that's what it's meant for. But we found that the PPS fits in it just fine. And by the way, we did find our uh, PPS Classic. Sick. So uh, if I'm running my PPS uh, and I don't want to have it print, outline, be shown to whoever's watching then I kind of need to make sure that I have a heavier uh, heavier gauge of fabric so it's not seen. That's what I'm saying. If you wear something super light, like silk, rayon, it just flows over the contours of the weapon and the holster, you get my drift. Uh, I really hate that. I ain't even lying about it. Number four reason I hate it, and this is huge. This is why I super hate IWBC. Brandishing. Brandishing. Now, I'm when I say brandishing, I'm not saying you're pulling out your gun and threatening someone. No, I'm saying that it is visible to someone you don't want it visible to, whoever that is. Can we just agree on that? That's what I'm talking about. Maybe you work, for instance, let's say you work for some place and they go, hey, you cannot carry your gun in here. And let's say there, there's a rash of workplace violence. You see these mass shootings and you go, screw that. Contrary to company policy, I'm going to go armed. And if there is an active shooter, in my workplace, I, I'm going to take the dude out. Let's just say that's that's the situation. That's what you've decided to do. Okay, so <laughs> let's say that you're uh, at a company picnic and you're carrying a gun inside the waistband and you get bump checked by the boss. Quite accidentally, by the way. And for whatever reason, you had the gun at the picnic and he bumps you and he clanks into the big chunk of metal. Let's say you're not carrying any of these relatively lightweight guns on there. You're carrying a 1911 and he hits that. And then you're made. You know, uh, think about it. That's not good. Uh, brandishing is an issue. Let's say you're in a store. You're leaning over to get something. You're in Lowe's. You're grabbing some gravel. Gun comes up. Maybe there's some sheep there and they freak out. I know they shouldn't. And then you have to explain, oh, yeah, I'm a concealed carry permit holder. I mean, it's just more hassle than I want to go through in life. 
brandishing. I, it, some states are pretty particular about that. You know, if, oh, you scare someone with a gun, you could lose your permit. Uh, and brandishing is not just having the gun exposed, but we go back to printing. So if anybody can look at you and say that guy's armed from your IWBC, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I like it. A lot of the times with a rubber grip, like this SIG P238, also in a Galco suede holster, has a rubber grip on it. I talked about it in the reviews. Great gun, by the way. I love the P238. But it grabs clothing. So you lean down to pick up, uh, I don't know, a French fire or something, and then your shirt grabs this, and it doesn't flow over the gun, gun's contours again, right? Next thing you know, the gun's exposed. You're walking around. It may, people might be looking at that. Brandishing. Number four reason. Number five, moving along. And this is just me. <laughs> this is just me. But dudes, no apologies because I dominate you guys in gear checks. I, I wear a fanny pack. You can deal with it. I Dude, I have a tactical blade, a couple Swiss Army knives in there, double flashlights, a whole bunch of cool, st uh, cool stuff. And uh, everybody I gear check has none of that. Well, I shouldn't say none, but few do. So yes, I still cont continue to carry. Nowadays, it's an REI. Uh, well, forget what name it is. It's an REI fanny pack that's, that's tight. I mean, it really sucks into my, uh, my gut, and so you can't really see it, and I'm wearing an untucked shirt. But a lot of reasons why I don't like IWBC is because it interferes with the waistband of the fanny pack. Now, of late, I said, I want to revisit this issue, and I have been doing inside the waistband carry. And the one I've been doing it with is Glock 43 with a single offside pouch. Where did it go? This one right here. So this is a crossbreed holster, crossbreed. This is a Fox, Fox. I just ordered a DeSantis. They're all excellent. I think crossbreed are great holsters. I think they're way overpriced though. Way overpriced for what you get. The Fox is excellent. We've had great luck with those. I don't know if Amazon still has the Fox. The DeSantis I'm thinking will be just as good. Uh, the fit on this, incidentally, mini review, is better than the Fox. I mean, the contours of the crossbreed, it really locks the gun in, uh, which you want. Just real tight fit, right? Um, but we're talking about fanny pack interference and how I've revisited. So I was carrying that, carrying that, and, and it works. I mean, I can do it. I am thinking about it all the time, and my straps on the fanny pack are pretty much <laughs> maxed out. <laughs> They're not interfering with the weapons draw. They're not. They're going underneath, kind of right through here. But it's kind of like the pant thing. I mean, I'm, I'm at the limits of adjustment. And so, you know, there's that. Also, Murphy's Law may come into play. So I'm saying, well, there's no straps here. But what if, just what if, kind of how Murphy works, when I really, really, really need the gun and really, really need it fast, I have a huge interference with a fanny pack. So maybe the strap is rode up under here. Maybe it's uh, woven its way through here where it obstructs the gun's access. Get my drift. Fanny pack interference. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I'm not dropping the fanny pack. I don't always have it, you know, but uh, generally when you see me, it's always been the case I do. Yeah, and I have a ton more capabilities than most of you guys do. Again, do I have to go through the list? Go watch my EDC videos, the EDC update videos. I go through the entire fanny pack in that. Number six. <laughs> I love this one. Reasons why I think IWBC kind of sucks. Taking dumps is problematic. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Dude, if you're if you're like me and have to take a dump like I do a lot, <laughs> then you're always going to be dropping pants <laughs> wherever. Maybe it's in a public stall. A stall. And there's been people who are doing IWBC with their gun. For whatever reason, the gun came out. They reach to grab it. They actuate the trigger. They crank around off. There was a school teacher in Utah that did that. Not good. That's the worst case scenario. I guess worst case is around hit somebody, an innocent person. You know, so you're sitting there blowing your mud. Your pla your your gun drops to the floor. You grab it. You crank around off. You could kill somebody. Theoretically. Now, that's kind of on the extreme end. More likely is that it's just a hassle because you have basically, I don't know, let's just ballpark and say 30 ounces of total weight for some of these major caliber carries between the offside mag and the, the gun side. 30 ounces, you drop your pants. Let's say you're in a public stall. You're trying to hold them. But for whatever reason, let's say you're having a really bad day with the offload. <laughs> you're distracted. Your pants drop. 
so does your mag, and it hits the floor with a big metallic clang. Dink! Maybe the gun falls out of the holster, it doesn't go off, but it skips into the next stall. I bet that's happened a lot. A lot. Dude, you're going to be taking a lot more dumps than you ever, ever are going to be, you know, using your gun. Choose your carry system accordingly. That, that right there should be the theme to the video. <laughs> it should. Now, we can make the case of, hey, dude, holster retention is so key to that. So if you have a properly fitted holster, when I take my pants down, it's going to stay in the holster. I, I'll give you that. I mean, like this Fox, this is running XDS. It's not exactly tight. It's okay. It's okay. You know, but if I shake it, out it comes. I can, I give you that. But even if it stays in the holster, it's still on a belt. It still has some slack where it can just bang into stuff. Now, and that's just, we're talking brandishing people knowing. But practically speaking, just getting everything back up to where it belongs is a hassle. So you got your business done, right? You still have that 30 ounces on your belt. Now you've got to tuck in your t-shirt. Got to make sure the belt's situated. Got to make sure the offside magazine carrier is where it's supposed to be. Make sure the clips haven't ridden up on the belt. Make sure you're not brandishing. You pull down your concealment device, whatever it is, shirt, sport coat. You get the picture? It's a lot of work. Meanwhile, dude, if I'm dropping trow with, with this setup, none of that comes into play. Because it's up on my shoulder. It's under my shirt. I mean, I can go do my business without even worrying about it. That's a huge reason for me. Huge reason why I think IWBC sucks. Uh, number seven, I kind of alluded to already. Um, at the company picnic, the fictitious company picnic, bump checks. Bump checks. That it's a lot easier for someone to know that you're armed if they want to. I mean, if I'm in a store and I... I'm just, this is a totally fictitious example, for instance. Uh, you know, you, people bump into you all the time. They don't mean to. But if someone wanted to know if you're armed, they were suspicious, is there anything illegal for them to just come and put their hip in you accidentally? Say, oh, excuse me, sir. They're just checking to see if you have a gun. And then they hit it and find out they do. Or you do. You know what I said? You know what I'm saying? Bump checks. Uh, now, that, that can happen with a shoulder carry. I give you that. It's much more rare, though, because it's under your armpit. And people generally don't go feeling around under your armpit. People are always bumping into you around the waistband, the hip area. It's just how it is. Especially in city areas, urban areas where it's crowded. People brushing up against you all the time. Now we can transmit uh, or move the gun placement to different areas where it's less likely. Uh, we just did a gear check with a fella and he was running basically right above the sack, I'll say. <laughs> you get my picture? So right in the front. So beneath the belly button. And that is much more difficult to bump check because it doesn't happen there last time I checked. It's going to be on the side, the periphery, right, of your hips. Uh, bump checks. Number seven. Moving along. Number eight reason. I hate inside the waistband carry IWBC. Offside magazine carriers take even up, uh, take even more space. I kind of alluded to this already, but here's the de deal, and this is why I want to stomp on a little bit, is I know a lot of dudes when they do IWBC... This jet fire, by the way, is insane. It carries very easily. But let's say he's running a jet fire. He easily, he, one of two things happens. He doesn't have a spare magazine. That's very common. Or it's jammed into a pocket. Why is that? This is why. Because number one, to buy an offside carrier is more expense. Number two, it's more hassle and time to put on. Truth dart, truth dart. And so he's packing, but maybe with a jet fire, he has a total of nine rounds and he's done. Nine rounds. Uh, better than nothing, sure. But, dude, if I'm deciding to go armed, I'm always going to have a reload. If I'm carrying a revolver, this SP-101, for instance, which I wouldn't carry, but Doodle does. It's just too heavy. It's a freaking tank of a gun, though. Um, you know, I'm going to have some uh, way to recharge it quickly. Some HKS speed loaders. I still love those. I can re reload super fast with them. But if you're running a wheel gun, dude... I mean, if you do offside carriers, it, they're fat. You know, they're cylindrical. They take up a lot of space. Almost always doodle, and most guys running revolvers are carrying it in the pocket. And then we get into the whole discussion. Well, now, how quick is your re reload going to be? Not very. Not very. So that's the number eight reason I hate IWBC. Because not only do I have to fit a gun in, I have to fit this in. More time, more space, more expense. I think you get it. Number nine. 
Oh, this is a good one. Number nine, uh, the ninth reason I hate IWBC. A lot of people, and I'm talking across the board, experienced guys, inexperienced guys, police officers, uh, maybe less so uh, police officers. Oh, here's some jackets, dude. I'll throw these on for some eye candy. These are cool. Um, they do involuntary gun checks when they have IWBC. Why do they do that? And, and what I'm talking about is if they're carrying, they'll just kind of reach over and touch the gun under the shirt. They're doing it to make sure it's in position. Has it shifted? Is it still secure? And some guys just like the feel of it. They'll go in there and eh, I got my gun with me. It feels good. That is a dead giveaway for anybody who knows how to spot armed individuals. A lot of law enforcement is trained in this. If someone is touching an area consistently, chances are they're packing a weapon there. May not be a gun, might be a knife, might be something else. So always doing involuntary gun checks is something you have to train yourself out of. It's very difficult to do because, like I said, sometimes it's an uncomfortable carry. Sometimes you're worried about brandishing. Uh, if I do it, I don't do it with my hand. I do it with my elbow. So I'll just elbow and just quick, quick sweep with elbow, and I'll make sure that my shirt's over my you know, my my holster. Uh, another thing I hate about it, and this is kind of different. Well, I guess it's kind of tying into it. And you can see it on here, the sweat stains, dude. I mean, these composite holsters are awesome. We have a you know, sheet of leather, you got a Kydex there, but it creates kind of a big old sweat patch in the summer, especially if you're a hot, human environment. That's uncomfortable. I mean, wearing a big old chunk of leather next to your skin is not comfortable. I don't care what anybody says, it's it's something. And so now you have maybe an you know, itchy thing going on, it's just discomfort, and then you're not really touching your gun because you want to feel it, make sure it's there, all that stuff but you're just uncomfortable. So you want to itch it and you're just, oh, I want it to go down there and itch or something. It's still a dead giveaway, man. Still, still a dead giveaway. Uh, so subconscious touching, the number nine reason coming to the end. Number 10 reason, hope you guys are digging this, right? <laughs> I love this one too. You'll wear your gun a lot more with IWBC. What do you mean? I mean, wear and tear carrying in a holster system is just more in my decades of experience. And that's all I'm talking about. I'm not trying to dovetail in any group think, any forum nonsense. No, I'm talking about from my own experience, what I've seen with my own weapons. So Glock 26 riding right here. We haven't given him any love today. And this one's hot, coming out of rotation. This is a great example. And this is the Glock, this is a very Glock 26 I bought in Spokane, Washington. And I did run it inside the waistband, and that is A grip material. Most of the wear and tear on this A grip, the polishing that you see on it right there, the rubbing off, was with IWBC. Is it a big deal? No, it's not a big deal, but I'm just saying. It, it wears it out more. The holster carry system, and uh, let me, I'm going to put the 43 in a holster real quick while we're talking. Just give it some love. And this is really what I'm running now, mostly a 43 in a holster with a mag carrier this is also still the galco classic light but the wear and tear on this system is like nothing it's nothing it's under your shirt if you have a an appropriately sized shirt it's almost invisible look how thin it is it's super thin dude you know that's what she said i get it it is though i mean it's it's nothing and so i'm not scratching it up i'm not tearing it up and something I've done with other guns is I've actually, when, when doing IWBC, I run against some stucco, concrete wall, stucco wall, and I grind it. I grind the slide, I grind the sight, I grind the polymer frame. Uh, inadvertently, maybe I'm moving something. I'm carrying something heavy. So the gun isn't on my mind. I'm working. I'm armed, but I'm working. Next thing you know, I look down, I got a huge gouge out of my gun. I did it to a SIG one time. Not cool, man. Hey, I don't care if my guns are all torn up. I, I get you, but I honestly think there's a smart way and a dumb way to put wear in your guns. And I think just, you know, gratuitous wear. I, I try not to do that. Uh, honest wear, absolutely, I welcome it. Um, but it's just more scrapes, uh, more bluing wear too. And that's if you practice out of a pure leather holster a lot, and you should practice a lot, the bluing, the coating on your gun is going to wear more. There you go. Well, it'll do it with this too. I get it. I get it. Let me end with this, man. Nothing is entirely perfect. I don't care if it's a holster system, an IWB system. I haven't even talked about ankle carry systems. I, I, I totally concede that. It's not perfect at all. You're going to have to 
give up something. The framework for this entire discussion, though, is again, rule of law. That the likelihood of you using your gun as a civilian, remember I said that, as a civilian is very, very slim. You still want to go armed. You still want to have, you know, compliance with the number one rule of a gunfight to have a gun, right? Uh, but choose a system that works for you. Okay, and I'm not saying in this video either that I won't do IWBC. I, I won't. I still do it. There's sometimes I want a faster presentation to the gun. Uh, in motorcycle riding, for instance, I'm experimenting with IWBC. And the one I'm doing it with is this XDS right here. We'll see how it works. Stay tuned. Uh, it's fast. I mean, if, if something happened, I could get to that a lot quicker than I could get to a shoulder carry because I'm, I'm in layers, man. I've got protective gear. I've got an inflatable safety vest. No, it doesn't work. In that situation, motorcycle philosophy of use, the inside the waistband is a superior system, right? Um, but in, inside the waistband, we've talked about some downsides and a lot of guys have shot themselves with IWBC. Why? Because they get out there, they don't have great tr trigger manipulation. Maybe they're careless. They crank around off, goes right into their thigh. You know, and you know, they're lucky to lot, live sometimes. So I think it's more dangerous than shoulder carry. Hey, but when you shoulder carry, you know, you're aiming to the dude behind you. So? So what? You know, you pull it out, good trigger control. It's been done for eons. Completely safe. There you go, man. I do <laughs> generally hate inside the waistband carry. No apologies. It's just the way it is. And all I'm laying on the table... Um, not just the guns, but I'm talking philosophically are the decades of experience, you know? Now we find that there's some big downsides. I mean, look at the P238, all the dust and crap you get in there. I've actually heard people pull out their guns. They've never cleaned them, but they've done IWBC for a long time and their guns jam because they've never cleaned them. Because generally the gun, not just wearing tear, I forgot to mention this, they're going to pick up a lot more lint, dirt, and just gunk. You're going to have to clean your gun more frequently. There you go. Ten reasons. Nothing fancy project. If you do decide to carry as a civilian, just choose whatever system works for you. If it's IWBC, rock on. I would never fault you for that at all. See you.